What's going on? My name is Ferris Savetti, co-founder and CEO of My Swim Pro, and today I'm gonna to share with you guys why I started a 100% distributed company. In addition to sharing five reasons why we decided to go 100% remote and distributed, I'll also be sharing the strategic advantages and disadvantages to starting a 100% remote company. I'll also finish the video with three questions that you should ask yourself if you're considering starting a 100% remote company. If you're not familiar with My Swim Pro, we are a technology and media company that creates mobile and wearable applications that help people improve their performance and health. We are a truly global company distributed team. We have team members across 10 different time zones. Our team speaks nine different languages and we serve an audience that is across 180 different countries. My hope is to be as transparent as possible so that if you're considering starting a distributed company or maybe you already have a company that you're already started and now you're considering hiring more employees and team members and trying to figure out just how you should do that, my hope is to share our perspective and maybe you can learn something from this video. If you want to learn more about my Swim Pro, be sure to check out my 2020 state of the company address that I did and it is linked in the description below. It's a 35 minute video where I go full transparency and I share as much as possible in detail about how we're positioning the company for growth in 2020 and beyond. Now to get onto the point of the video of five reasons why we decided to start a 100% distributed and remote team, reason number one is to build a global company. It's really difficult to build for a global audience solving an international problem when everyone on the team looks the same, speaks the same language, and is all living in the same city or in the same geography. For us at My Swim Pro, we happen to serve an international market. Literally, people swim all over the world, and the people who use our mobile application are living in over 180 different countries. And so because of that, to build a true global company, to solve a true global challenge, and to meet the needs of a global audience, global community members, an international audience, we have to be a global company. Now that's not to say that you have to be a global company for whatever business that you're trying to work on, but I think for us, we decided to go the global route because we recognize that not everyone is located in the United States like I am and some of our initial team members, but we need to extend beyond that and to truly serve a global audience with international challenges and to bring that diversity of perspective, it really makes sense to have a globally distributed team so that way we can be building around the clock, serving their needs around the clock and delivering them content and an application experience that solves a diverse set of needs. So the second reason that we are building a 100% remote team is to access global talent. This is probably the most significant reason and most important for you to consider when you're building a fully distributed team. Now when I say accessing global talent, what do I actually mean? I'll give you an example of a team that is not distributed, a more traditional brick and mortar office location. Let's say you're in Detroit or Boston or Austin, Texas. You can only hire people that are within a say 50 mile radius of your location if you're not distributed. If you wanna hire people that are not living within that 50 mile radius of the city, you're gonna to have to recruit people from abroad, whether it's inside of your country or outside the country, and you have to make them relocate to live in your city. Now that can offer a number of benefits and build a unique culture, but we're talking about what's the benefit of going global and going distributed. You can access a talent pool that is literally 100 times larger, two orders of magnitude, and tap into not only the metro of your city, but literally billions of people who could be users of your product, people if you're on the engineering side, they could be skilled engineers, and to think that the best talent in the world only happens to live in your specific city is quite frankly a little bit naive and arrogant. So there's awesome talent, there's awesome people around the world and to be able to access that talent from a global perspective and to push further on this point, at My Swim Pro, we have the mindset of we wanna hire the best people in the world regardless of their location. So whether that means you're living in Istanbul, Turkey, or you happen to be in New York City, anywhere in the world, it really doesn't matter. We wanna hire the best people in the world. And if you're building a traditional business with a physical location, you really can't do that because again, you'd be naive to think that the best people in the world happen to live in the San Francisco Bay Area only, and you'll only hire people from there. For My Swim Pro, we also push this another step, and we actually only hire team members from our community. Now this might change in the future as we continue to grow, but what I mean by that is people who use our application are the front runners of being team members at our company. So if you use the application and you love what we're doing, we want you to be a part of our journey and build for this global audience and share your unique global perspective to help us with our international pursuit. Third reason why we decided to build a 100% remote 
remote team is because the unit economics just make more sense. We are more capital efficient as a business. If you think about the example of a San Francisco Bay Area company, or maybe it's in New York or Boston or any of these hotbed technology areas, the cost of hiring people and the cost of building a business is just so much more significant than if you are anywhere else in the world. So to access this global talent pool and to do it on a unit economic efficiency manner, it really doesn't actually make any sense to do it in one of these more expensive markets. And I truly believe that if you're building a technology company and you need to access a consumer global audience, it is actually fiscally irresponsible for you to open a company in San Francisco. And actually Mark Zuckerberg was just quoted saying if he were to start Facebook again, he would not do it in the Bay Area. Things have changed a lot in the last 10 years. It is now 2020. I think the future is to have more companies doing an international distributed of some variety workforce. And I think as time continues and the cost of living index changes in some of these different cities, we'll see more and more companies take this approach. But for us to be able to have an international workforce at a unit economic cost less than what it would be if you were to move a company to the Bay Area or to New York City or to London, for example. These markets are significantly more and there's more competition to hire the talent. Some of the biggest tech companies in the world, whether it's Facebook, Google, um, any of these companies, they are going to outperform you when it comes to salary expectations and things like that. So if you are to build a truly remote global team, you can essentially sidestep all of that and hire the best people in the world, let them live where they want to live and do it on a more capital efficient basis with what you have. Now the fourth reason that we decided to go 100% remote is the flexibility. It is an incredible opportunity to have a flexible schedule, whether you work from nine to five on Eastern hours or you work from 6 a.m. to 2 p.m., you work at 2 a.m. in the morning, it it really doesn't matter as long as the work is being done and we can get into the details of synchronous and asynchronous communication. People ask us all the time, how do you manage a, work, a team that is spread out across 10 time zones? Now for us, we do have a little bit of overlap across everyone on the team at some point during the day and I know that won't continue in the future and we'll have to adjust and adapt as we grow. But in the time being, the flexibility that having a fully remote team offers is absolutely amazing. I work out in the middle of the day. You don't have to waste time and money on commutes. If you have a co-working space, that's awesome. Like today I'm in a co-working space and this is great to have the opportunity to go and see other people, other entrepreneurs, business people, freelancers, whatever it is that they do to get that inspiration and excitement is awesome. And some days I decide I'm not going to go here. If it's snowing, I'm not going to leave the house. And to have that flexibility, whether you have a doctor appointment, you have errands you need to run, have that flexibility to do that, to do a workout in the middle of the day is something that is truly, truly significant. And as I get older and as our team members mature and whether if you have a family or kids, to have that flexibility is absolutely priceless. Now the fifth reason we decided to make a 100% remote and distributed team is it just felt right. Now I know that sounds kind of fluffy and fuzzy and me being the analytical and strategic person that I am, this actually doesn't fit my persona at all. But after reading some of the articles of some of the most successful 100% distributed teams, and these are teams that I've followed for the last five or six years, they've gone from an idea, now they have hundreds of employees, and to see the best practices, to apply the greatest, latest and greatest in technology, and to realize that this is the future. In the future, more and more companies will be doing this. And for me personally, I like going against the grain. I don't really like following the norm. And so for this, it just felt right. The perfect timing, the perfect intersection of being able to hire global talent to have a unit economic efficient business, to have that kind of flexibility and all of the other variables that we've mentioned, it just felt right. And I'm really excited that we've decided to go 100% distributed and remote. So you might be thinking to yourself, what are the advantages and disadvantages of having a company set up like this? I'll first talk about the advantages. The first and probably biggest strategic advantage is hiring a global workforce and the unit economic efficiencies that go into that. And similar to the next strategic advantages I'll share, I already talked about them as these are the reasons why we decided to go 100% distributed. But you can't escape the fact that when you decide to go distributed, you can hire a team that is truly the best in the world and you can increase the talent pool of people that you're hiring from by literally two or three orders of magnitude. It is absolutely insane the concept that you can hire anyone in the world, you can work together, and you can build towards something in a way that you really can't do that if you put everyone in one office. There are a number of logistical and legal issues with having people move. At the same time, 
people are happy where they are. And to think that you should move someone just to join your company is actually pretty silly and an outdated thought. So the number one reason why I think you should consider as a huge strategic advantage to go 100% remote is accessing global talent and doing it on a unit economic level that is more efficient for you to grow your business. Now the second advantage is the flexibility that this provides to your team. I talked about flexibility on a personal level to be able to work out in the middle of the day, do your errands, and really work on your own timetable, whether you work from home or go to a co-working space, that is a huge benefit. But there is a benefit to the business as well. And studies have proven that when a team has the option to work remote or can work fully remote, they are simply more productive. They have less days where they're sick. And so to have more efficiency per team member is a huge advantage because you're more productive and ultimately a more productive team will yield a stronger and more financially successful business. Now the third advantage is something I actually didn't even think about until we went fully distributed and now I've been able to see this after a couple of years. This is the documentation and communication becomes so much better when you're fully remote. There are a lot of office inefficiencies when you have everyone all together. Now there are more complexities potentially when you have a distributed team but that forces you to document everything. Everything is very transparent and you have to be because if you're not, it's not gonna be possible to be successful. So to have all of this documentation, communication, everything set in stone on a much smaller team level, it allows you to scale and move much faster. And in business, whether regardless of what kind of business you have, whether it's a technology business or you have a media company or you have some you know, e-commerce site, it really doesn't matter. To be able to move faster, to innovate, and to have an awesome communication lever is a huge strategic advantage. It wouldn't be fair to talk about how great working at a 100% remote team is without talking about some of the disadvantages. Now the biggest disadvantage that I can feel as well as other team members and just talking with other distributed workforces is the fact that you have this isolation, right? It can feel kind of boring when you're on your own. You know, after a certain period of time, even if you do go to a co-working space, the people that you communicate with the most you don't actually see in person. They might be five time zones away from you and that can get lonely and boring after a period of time. So as a result, all the great productivity I mentioned from having a distributed team can actually be negated and that's a huge disadvantage. Now there are a couple of different ways to combat this. You can be very creative in your team standups. For us, for example, we have a video call literally every single day and every week we have an all team meeting. We also do an international team retreat which is an awesome way to connect the team. We do a lot of team building, we talk about strategy and it's a great way for everyone to have at least one opportunity for seven days in a year to come together, collaborate with each other, get to know the person outside of the work life and really understand what makes them tick. And so that is one way and along with others that you can really combat this feeling of isolation that you feel. But it's definitely something that you have to consider and it's not for everyone. The second huge disadvantage of being a 100% distributed team is more on an individual by individual basis, but that is being distracted. And even if you go to a co-working space and you set your own schedule and you're pretty productive on your own, it can be very easy to get distracted if something comes up and being able to have the self-discipline is not for everyone, which is why it's really important when you're hiring and you're recruiting for international team members, it's really important that they have the right experience and they've done it before. Even if someone hasn't worked on 100% remote team, they have some level of independence and that self-independence is something that you can see through side projects, hustling multiple jobs at the same time, or maybe ideally they've worked at a distributed team before in a remote role and they have this self-discipline and this timeline for themselves that they can work independently without the fear of having all these distractions come into play. The third disadvantage of having a 100% distributed team is the work-life balance. Now a lot of people talk about work-life balance, working too many hours, too little hours. Actually, not many people are working too little hours. Oftentimes people are working around the clock and this is a trap that you can fall into if you are a 100% remote team. How can you combat this? Well, at our company, we have a minimum three week unlimited vacation policy. We always stress that it's not really about how much time you put into your work. The results speak for themselves. Now, as a small team, this is actually pretty easy to keep accountable, just the kind of work that everyone's doing. And if you hire A players and the best people in the world, they're pretty efficient with their time. So as a team, it's really important that you stress if you're the leader, if you're the CEO, if you're the entrepreneur, if you're the person that's set in a direction, that you make it clear to your team that there's certain hours when they're expected to be doing stuff, figure out your schedule, figure out what is expected for them to deliver on, what are their key roles at MySwimPro. Everyone on the team has three key objective roles that they are working towards improving and, and building for the company. And that is really the most 
powerful indicator of their performance, not how many hours they're working. At the end of the day, what's important is the work that they're actually doing. And if you hire the best people in the world, that 40 hours per week is more realistic to what they'll be doing. And as a CEO, as a founder, as the entrepreneur, you have to set the expectation of what exactly that means for every single team member, what is allowed, what isn't allowed. And of course, having the team retreats and having an unlimited vacation policy and flexibility is super important for us to be able to instill that values of work-life balance. If you're considering starting a distributed company or maybe you already have a business up and running and you're considering adding an international or remote workforce, here are three things to consider. The first thing to consider is what is your motivation for doing this in the first place? Consider the strategic advantages and disadvantages, maybe reference what we've done at MySwimPro and some other companies that have been very public and transparent about how they build a globally distributed team. And think about why you're doing this. Is it because you have a global audience and you wanna access that diversity of perspective with your team? Is it you're trying to save money on a unit economic level? Figure out what it is that you're doing and don't make a distributed team just for the sake of building a distributed team. The second question to ask yourself is what kind of a distributed team are you going to build? Check out this awesome graph by our friends over at Buffer. They've been a very transparent company, really scaled and set the tone for what it's like to be a fully remote workforce. Now there's a few different options here. You can have on the one side, a brick and mortar office where everyone is expected to be there nine to five, Monday through Friday, and that is traditionally how most businesses are built today. Then you can have another scenario where you have a main office, but you allow those team members to work remote maybe once a week or twice a week. Then as you move along the scale, you have what is called a brick and mortar office as the main location, and then you'll have another location somewhere else. Maybe you'll have a distributed team in addition. So I just talked to another company uh, about a week ago. They have 20 team members, 10 are in one location, and 10 are distributed. I would say that's a mid-level remote team. Then you have distributed in the same time zone. So no one actually works together. You don't have an office. Everyone's either in co-working spaces or in their house and they're working together, but they happen to be in the same time zone or maybe they're in the same country. So if you're in the United States, maybe they're just an American team and they're spread out over two or three time zones and everyone is still working towards the same company missions. Then you have a fully global distributed team. And this is more similar to what we are at MySwimPro. We're spread out over 10 time zones. We do not have a central office location. We do have a cluster in Michigan in the United States. But again, we don't have a central office and there isn't a company culture of being in the office is more advantageous than being not in the office. And this is the most important thing to consider if you are gonna do a distributed team. If you've already started on one side of the spectrum, you have everyone in the location, you have 50 employees, it will be near impossible to go all the way to the extreme end of the other side of the scale, meaning you have a 100% distributed team. Most likely because you don't have the correct communications infrastructure, the transparency necessary, and all of the team members that are existing in the team, all of your operations have been set up to have an in-location office. Same as on the other side, if you've built out a fully distributed team, it will be very hard to force 50, 20, 100, 1,000 employees all to move to one location and then have to go into work. Most likely that's not going to be possible. So consider if you've already gotten started, where are you on this, time, on this scale? And it's unlikely that you'll be able to move very far away. So it's really important that you decide upfront if you're gonna go distributed, either go 100% or don't do it at all. The third question to ask yourself is do you trust your team members to work independently? I mentioned it before that you get this flexibility, but you also have to have this self-discipline. And if you're not ready as a leader to trust your team members to go ahead and do the work that they do on their own without the guidance of having someone standing over them, then this is actually not for you. And I highly discourage you to consider doing a 100% remote team. It really depends on the personality of the founder. And I will say for me personally, it is actually a huge disadvantage to have my personality and not be in location with all my team members. I am one that delivers with a lot of energy and I'm very good at recruiting the team around a certain mission. And that just means you have to be more specific with your communication and the team building things that you do. Because if I were to operate the company as if we did have an office, we would be very unsuccessful because I cannot lead the same way that we do with an office versus not having an office. So that's another thing to really consider. On this note, something else that you should consider is what type of a leader are you? For me, I lead with charisma. I deliver with a lot of energy and I try and recruit the team around the main focus of what we're trying to do. This energy and the way that I deliver and the way that I communicate is actually different if I were in person as compared to digitally, whether it's through video, through our communication that we do online, or even at our team retreat. So you have to think about it from a perspective of what kind of a leader are you 
ask yourself, do you have the trust to give to your team? How do you communicate and how do you deliver and how can you make your team most productive so you can ultimately be the most successful in your business? I hope this video was helpful for you to understand why I decided to start a 100% remote company. My hope is to be as transparent as possible so that other entrepreneurs, other business leaders can see what we've done at MySwimPro and if you can learn anything and apply it to your business, that would be fantastic. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you give it a like and subscribe to my channel. I'll be sharing more and more videos about how we're building our company at MySwimPro. Also, if you haven't checked out that 2020 state of the company address, it is a 35 minute juicy video with how I strategically think about building the business. I'll make sure that's linked in the description. Also check out the TEDx talk I did on how I turned the idea of building my Swimpro into the app of the year. It is a 10 minute TEDx talk. I'll link it in the description below. Thanks again for tuning in and I'll catch you guys later. Bye.